Boki Tov Harim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Well, this morning, um, our, uh, actually this is on March 14th here, uh, Mr. Pence is not very happy with Julian Assange. Julian Assange uh, actually tweeted out the other day, a couple of days ago, that Clinton started privately this month that she is quietly pushing for a Pence takeover. She stated that Pence is predictable and hence defeatable. Uh, also, he says two IC officials close to the Pence stated privately this month that they are planning on a Pence takeover. Did not state if Pence agrees. Now, this is really interesting, and uh, I've watched this a little bit myself, not from Julian Assange, but I have really been wondering if there is not a plan to try to topple President Trump. We've seen already several other media sources out there talking about impeaching uh, Donald Trump. Uh, there have been those that have been trying to evaluate him uh, on a, another amendment uh, to actually remove him saying he's unfit for office. And of course, if that were to happen there, if they go that route or even an impeachment, it would put President Pence in power. I've also seen articles out there stating that if they would like to topple both Trump and Pence and put none other than former President Barack Hussein Obama back into the White House. Uh, now, I don't think this changes anything. Even if Pence is in agreement secretly for the toppling of that of President Trump from office there, I don't see any of this being uh, anything that would affect what we saw the prophecy of Zechariah 12. In fact, again, Trump's administration clearly, uh, a lot not everyone in his administration, but quite a few of his administration uh, people there are very pro-Israel, even including that of Mike Pence. He is also very pro-Israel. And that may be why you see Trump so pro-Israel, because of Mike Pence. So I don't think that would change anything, even if he did take over. Um, but still, it's very interesting to see this is going on. Of course, Mike Pence said that the, the uh, tweet of Julian Assange is totally absurd. But you got to remember, this guy also has a lot of intel that none of us get to see as of yet. That is, if he is even still alive. I don't even know. It just makes you wonder sometimes all the things that are going on. Let's turn over to North Korea right now. North Korea, they are, uh, this, this report here, and I actually have to thank my good friend Lorenzo on uh, uh, Already Happened. I picked this up from one of his own tweets there, this article here. North Korea is turning a Scud ER into an anti-ship ballistic missile. This is knowledge, according to the article here, that North Korea gained from the Iranians and how they had also turned many of their Scud missiles into to ship sinking missiles. And with the buildup of US forces and Japanese forces there near uh, North Korea and South Korea also planning on trying to topple Kim Jong-un. And I don't think this is no longer just a matter of training exercises, but it's starting to seem more and more that it is definitely going to be an inevitability. We know that Japanese, we reported the other day, are trying to vote for a preemptive strike authorization of force against North Korea, not just a defense uh, authorization. And we see as well that Obama has also sent in Team 6, uh, known as the Navy SEALs Team 6, uh, that was the ones that took out uh, 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 bin Laden, and this team here is also being deployed there, as they say, for training drills. I don't think the Navy SEALs are just deploying for training drills. I really believe that they are sending in uh, these guys here because it looks like that um, this is something that uh, President uh, Trump is wanting to get done. He's wanting to defuse the situation with North Korea. And of course, the quicker he defuses the situation with North Korea, the sooner you can kind of normalize relationships with Russia. Because at this point now, Russia and China both are very concerned about the THAAD system that has been deployed there to South Korea because this is a high altitude uh, anti-missile defense shield. And it is not something that really would be justifiable for North Korea, according to Russian and Chinese officials. So whether it be Russia or China, either one, uh, the dealing with North Korea, once this situation is dealt with, would probably settle down the fears of China and North Korea, uh, Russia as well. So just kind of have to wait and see how that pans out, you might say there. Another thing that uh, Lorenzo shared that is kind of old news, but it really caught my attention. Now, this is something that uh, President Trump, before he was president, uh, supposedly, I'm, I'm going to have to say allegedly here, back in, uh, uh, well, I don't know if it's that old or not, but anyway, he tweeted this, tell Saudi Arabia and others that we want free oil for the next 10 years or we will not protect their private Boeing 747s. Pay up. 
Now, I don't know if Trump really tweeted this or not. Uh, it appears to be, I did go and try to look at the, the original tweet. It seems to be that before he was president, back, back around 2015, this was something that he actually tweeted out. But here's what it caught my attention on. If Donald Trump can make a statement like that, or we will not protect their private Boeing 747s, that helped me to even more clarify the fact of what happened to flight, what was it, 90, uh, I forget the actual flight number, it was a Green Way, uh, a German Wings A320, and uh, I believe that was flight 9525. Let me just double back here and take a quick, yeah, yeah not flight 9525, if you remember, that fateful flight there over the French Alps that crashed mysteriously. And of course, they blamed it on the pilot, saying he was an Arab guy and he'd lost his mind and everything, totally destroying this man's family because he was not insane. And no, he did not drive the plane into the ground and lock the door so they couldn't get in there. There were too many. There was one former specialist uh, who was a, uh, a retired pilot, a captain, uh, who clearly said that the Boeing's uh, uh, defense system that they have in the plane, and I forget the name of that there, where the Boeing can take control of any plane that has been hijacked and drive it anywhere they want. They can fully take that plane away from them. And he was under the impression that this plane was intentionally crashed into the ground and they can take the pilots and make them go to sleep. That's why he was breathing normally. And as I said, he never, he never started hyperventilating or anything before the crash. All weird things. You gotta remember too, this is when Merkel, uh, the Chancellor of Germany was talking about backing out on doing uh, any kind of sanctions against President Putin's Russia and because they were good friends and she did not want to hurt the economic ties the European Union had. So there were some that were saying that this was a message sent to Merkel, either go along with what we're doing or this can happen again. And those of you that may recall, that flight had a group of students on board, high school students, many of them, that oh, well, they all perished in the crash. And so that's what really caught my attention about President Trump's tweet. Uh, for the next, pay, give us the oil free for the next 10 years or we will not protect their private Boeing 747s. Pay up. Well, it is a Boeing uh, system that's put in there. I think it was only the, um, uh, there was one country that ordered these planes in the Middle East that disarmed all of that technology so that they could not be crashed into the ground. Uh, in closing, one other bit of news here. It's kind of interesting. Palestinians are actually calling, calling for the uh, removal of Mahmoud Abbas from, pre from being over the uh, Palestinian Authority's group there. And the reason why they're calling on this, by the way, that is being reported on World Israel News there, uh, is because of his coordination with the Israelis uh, in uh, security coordination in Israel there. And I think it's kind of interesting because it lets us know that this two-state solution that they have always been saying that they're going to bring about is moving further along. And I am sure that Rome has a big hand in the play of these two working together because we know even after the opening of the embassy by uh, Mahmoud Abbas inside of uh, Vatican City there, they are working closer and closer together. And the whole purpose is to take Jerusalem from the Jewish people, but they're not gonna get all of Jerusalem, but I'm sure they'll get enough to make the Vatican happy. And that may include Mount Zion right along with the rest of it. I'm Stephen Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live. Got another interesting broadcast I'm gonna be bringing out. We'll be sharing it on Danoon Institute. You're gonna to wanna to see this if you like following our teaching messages there. It's gonna be about Laodicea, that gold that, that, that Yeshua himself says, try of me the gold that is in the fire. You're gonna find out that Laodicea and that of the children of Israel with Moses had a lot in common. Watch that message on Danoon Institute later today. Might even share it here on Israeli News Live for those of you that are watching here. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. I'd love to say shalom, but we know that the world right now is Ain Shalom. We'll also be going back to Antarctica to look at this issue a little bit deeper as well. When we did the video the other day, it actually it stopped recording about uh, the last 10 minutes. I didn't pick up, so I want to share some things with you. Um, something that Bonnie Harvey had sent to me as well about this that goes along with that scripture. Uh, I did get some of the people saying that uh, we should reach out to Steve Quayle. I have sent him a message. If, the, if any of you guys know Steve Quayle personally, I know about five years ago, him and my wife, uh, 
text back and forth a little bit. She had his private number at one time. We've lost that over the years. Uh, but I'd love to talk to him. Uh, we were sent uh, his interview on Hagman and Hagman. And that was actually the first time myself I've ever actually sat down and listened to one of Steve Quell's uh, messages. So it was very enlightening. And, uh, and I think that what, what God has led me to in the book of Enoch here would be just that much more of a confirmation of the work that Steve Quell is doing. So if you do know him yourself personally and can reach out to him, let him know we're trying to contact him. We'd love to have an interview with him. You can email me at stephenbennoon at gmail.com.